your feet happy. Let's go. Come on.
Hello, and welcome to Grace United Methodist Church's virtual services. Grace United Methodist Church is located at 7101 North 20th Street in the West Oak Lane section of Philadelphia. Grace can be reached at YouTube and Facebook at Grace UMC, the place to be. We can be reached on the web now at graceumcogants.org. We can be reached via phone at 215-549-0619. Thank you for joining us, and here's our pastor, the Reverend Stephen Michael Pittman. God bless you. Welcome to Grace UMC is the place to be. We are so glad that you could join us here today. Beloved, it's a blessing to be among the land of the living. It's a blessing to have our families with us. Let us thank God each and every day for the wonderful things that God has done. Today, beloved, we will be blessed with a word by our highly esteemed former Bishop Peggy Johnson. She has moved on from the conference, but she is still with us in spirit. And we wanna to continue to pray God's blessings over her life, her family, and her ministry. We will be blessed as we look back at a word that she has given concerning unity. So at this time, beloved, we are going to go into our time of worship. So be blessed and enjoy. giving us a mind that can know and a heart that can love. Thank you for giving us the chance to continue learning amidst the pandemic that had caused a lot of changes in our lives. We are sorry for the times we have failed you. We humbly ask for your forgiveness. Father, help us stay focused on our studies. When learning becomes difficult, grant us the gifts of courage and enthusiasm. Grant us the grace to use our knowledge in making a difference to the lives of the people around us. All this we pray in your mighty name. Everything. 
Father God, we thank you that you are a God of miracles. And today there are many who are in need of a miracle. We ask, Lord, that you remove any pain, disease, illness, sickness of any kind. We ask, Lord, that you perform a miracle. Regardless of the prognosis, the diagnosis, God, we ask, Lord, that you come in a mighty way. We know that you are the great physician. We know that you can do everything but fail. And so, Lord, we just ask that you bring about your presence and your power to heal your people in a mighty way. We just ask, Lord, that you just continue to strengthen their bodies. We ask, Lord, that you just continue to bless your people on today with joy. We pray for those who have recently lost loved ones. We ask, Lord, that you continue to give them strength. We ask today, Lord, that you be with Sister Loretta Johnson concerning the loss of her mother. We also pray today for Sister Danette Coot concerning the loss of her father. We just ask, Lord, that you just be a source of comfort around them and others who have recently lost loved ones. Bring about your healing, Lord, and continue to remind us that weeping may endure for a night, 
but joy comes in the morning. Father, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you always. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, Grace. Return to Grace Day has been postponed, as you all know, due to the recent surge of COVID-19's variant D. Once a new date has been established, all will be notified. You may continue to enjoy services on Facebook, YouTube, or Zoom. FIA will have their choir rehearsal on Thursday, September 16th at 7 p.m. Rehearsal for the male chorus is scheduled for Thursday, September 23rd at 6 p.m. And the next chancel choir rehearsal is Thursday, September 30th, also at 6 p.m. The Women of Grace invite you to Morning Glory with Grace, the virtual answer to the annual Women's Day Breakfast. This online event will be held on Saturday, September 25th at 9 a.m. A flyer has been sent to all the women who provided Joyce Gallier with their email address. You men should expect a flyer as well in the very near future. The suggested donation is $25. You may bring your donation to the church on Tuesdays or Saturdays leading up to the event. Or you can mail it into the church or use bill pay or the cash app. Make sure you annotate that it is for Morning Glory with Grace. The login information is on the flyer that has been provided. And for additional information, or if you have any questions, you can contact Susie Hill, Bernadette Jones, or Shauna Myrie. The Women's Day Committee would also like for the women, if you have not done so already, to send in pictures of yourself, a picture of yourself, um, no later than September 26th, you can send it to Kim Smith or Joyce Gilliard. Our new church secretary, Ms. Jasmine Royal, would like to remind us all that the new church office hours are as follows. Tuesdays and Thursdays between the hours of 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. and Fridays from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. A message from the Board of Finance. The finance team would like to thank everyone for their continued generous giving during this challenging year and a half. We now have a special request. As you know, there is ongoing work being done in the social hall. Walls are being gutted, cement work is being done to correct serious erosion and mold, as well as repairs to the to the stage floor. We therefore are asking that you make a concerted effort to give to the building fund to pay for the work that is currently being done. The majority of the giving has been directed to tithing, which is great, but this time uh, more funds need to be directed to the building fund. This will help eliminate the need of shifting funds from one account to another, which can risk the depletion of other accounts. We wish to continue to segregate the church's accounts. Thank you for your understanding and we look forward to your help as we make these important fixes to our church home. And that is from Robert Young, the finance chairperson. You can mail your tithes and offering to Grace United Methodist Church, 7101 North 20th Street. Tithes and offering can be brought to the church office mail slot on Tuesdays and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. You can also use bill pay or the cash app. If using the cash app, download to your phone and give to dollar sign, Grace is the place. Grace your the appreciation is there and we know the love is there because you all have continued to show support in your giving 
So please continue with those efforts and you can give your donation, your, your tithes and offering um, the ways that, which I just mentioned. Our Grace family extends prayers and condolences to Danette Coote, whose father passed away, and Loretta Johnson, who lost her mother. Let us keep the members and friends of Grace who are on our sick and recovering lists in our thoughts and prayers as well. Special prayers for Barry and Joyce Galliard, Reverend Julia Bright, Juanita Rutland, Gladys Mumford, Mary Chisholm, Mr. and Mrs. Hollis, Chantel Branch, Dolores Smith, Josephine Morris, and Angela Reese. Be sensible and responsible when out and about. COVID-19's D variant is still with us and has been causing havoc, especially for those unvaccinated. Your best defense is to get your vaccine if you are eligible and have not yet done so. And to wear your mask when you are out and about, especially in stores. You have the power to save your life as well as those around you by doing those two things. To everyone, enjoy a safe and happy week. Enjoy and have a wonderful, blessed, stay safe, stay healthy, and we will see you next week. You get you get until midnight. <laughs>
I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And today I'd like to preach a word about unity, the importance of unity. And a very, very important text from Ephesians speaks to us about this. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 to 4. I therefore, prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is only one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. Brothers and sisters, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your word. It is indeed manna for our souls. So bread from heaven, feed us till we want no more, and send us from this place, and feed your hungry world. Now, Lord, in spite of me or through me, speak a word to your people. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, as you know, I used to work with deaf people, and I used to especially love working with the deaf choir. And when the deaf choir was singing their songs, they would sign with great enthusiasm. And one of their favorite songs was, down by the riverside, down by the riverside. And when they signed the part that said, I'm going to lay down my burdens down by the riverside, they would throw the burdens down. Their hands would be chucking those burdens as far away as they could because they wanted to be free. They wanted to throw off anything that was holding them back. And indeed, I believe the biggest burden of the church and our country right now is the burden of disunity. I would like to throw that down because it is born of racism, greed, partisan politics, and pride. The events of the past few months with the death of George Floyd has set in motion an incredible call for change, and that's good news. This change can only happen, though, if all people are unified in their purpose. Only as we work together can we make real progress in our world and in our church. As your bishop, I pledge to keep this before us and to do what I can to break down the barriers of division so that we can be a model for what it means to walk together with one purpose. And we can only do this through the power of the Holy Spirit. As people walk with the Lord, the barriers of race and ethnicity and all the things that separate us, human pride, position, power, all of that breaks down into we are one in Christ, all uniquely gifted and all equal in the sight of God. Our United Methodist Church is in a unity battle around homosexuality and the words of our Book of Discipline around same-gender marriage and ordination. We are very divided over this. We're so divided that we're even talking about splitting the denomination at some point. How very sad, our lack of unity. How very, very sad. We are living in important times, church. And a call for unity has never been more important. So what does the Word of God say to us about this, especially from the book of Ephesians? This letter was written to a church that Paul had established around the year 55 AD. Ephesians, was, uh, Ephesus, was a city of great prosperity. It had commerce, and they worshipped the Greek goddess Artemis. And there was evidence that Jews were also living in Ephesus at that time. And likely he began this church out of a Jewish synagogue, and then Gentiles received the gospel with joy, which seemed to always be the case in Paul's ministry. The letter to the Ephesians was written while Paul was in prison. You know, people in prison write some pretty powerful stuff. Paul was in prison four times and wrote passionate letters to the Philippians, Colossians, an individual named Philemon, and also this letter to the new Christians in Ephesus. He was a prisoner for preaching the gospel. 
And I thank God that he kept preaching with pen and paper while he was in prison so that we can still read these words today. The letter was written to encourage this mixed church, Gentiles and Jews. He was encouraging them to have unity because obviously there were some big issues about the law that divided them. But unity in Christ was the only hope given their vast cultural diversity. The letter to Ephesians still gives us a roadmap for all that we need as we strive for unity in the church and in our world today. So how do you have unity? Here are some basic principles from the Apostle Paul. First, you need to have a lot of humility. The burden of racism is huge. This is the stuff that makes for injustice, discrimination, and all manner of evil in this country that created Jim Crow, mass incarceration, and voter suppression, to name a few. And the Methodist Church was not absolved from this. We had the burden of pride and racism when we created the segregated central conferences years ago when some of our bodies came back together after a division. That separated white people from black people in separate organizational structures. How racist is that? Paul is saying we need to study war no more. You do this with humility and nonviolent, persistent advocacy and peaceful protest. Yes, peaceful. Humility wants the other and all people to win. Not just to beat them up, but everybody should be included. Humility loves the one you disagree with. I read a book about the life of Abraham Lincoln last year. And obviously Lincoln lived during some pretty divided times during the time of the Civil War. He had accomplished what he did through humility. He was a very humble man. He would joke about himself. For example, someone said to him in a debate, you're two-faced. And he said, well, if I had two faces, would I have kept this one? Because people were always saying he was kind of homely, which he sort of was. But anyway, Lincoln was humble personally. But he was also humble in that he would listen to his detractors and not act like the debates we have nowadays with so much mudslinging, so much negativity. He would never say anything against people who disagreed with him. He worked between the North and the South, carefully and humbly hearing them all out and crafting peace. The Emancipation Proclamation would never have happened apart from this. Never. Another president with the other attitude could never have had this happen. Lincoln once said, the best way to destroy your enemy is to make them your friend. That's a good plan for all of us. How about you? Are you at war with someone here? Or in your family? Or at work? Where can you use humble persuasion to conquer the divide? One of my biggest victories in my early days of ministry was when I was led by God to apologize to a couple with whom I was having a huge conflict about who gets the keys in the office. Now I'm sure none of that happens in your church, but these kind of things can cause some major wars. But when I finally sat down and humbly said, I'm sorry, I did not listen to you. I did not appreciate all the things you did in the office. That was when forgiveness and peace happened. It wasn't that I won or I was right or they were right. It was that we got to sit down with each other's humanity and craft a way forward. And that set a tone for a lot of attitudes in the church, where people could just sit down and talk out their differences and agree to disagree agreeably in Christian love and humility. So who can you apologize to? Who can you have a calm, respectful conversation with right now? And you don't have to end up agreeing on any particular issue, but just agree in Christ and know that humble persistence will always win the day. This is slow work, but this is God's work. The second admonition from the Apostle Paul is that we need to bear with one another in love. The Greek word for bearing is also used as an architectural term when one is building a roof 
that will protect the house from the elements. I was involved in a renovation project in the 80s of a church that had laid dormant for years and was mostly destroyed. It was built in 1847 and it officially closed in 1922. The roof had been burned off for some reason and the stonework was falling down because there was no roof to hold things together. So we repaired the stonework and then it was time to put on a new roof. Big problem. Some people wanted trusses and other people wanted rafters. Actually, I didn't know what the difference was, but it was a big problem. People were, you know, really having sharp words over trusses and rafters, trusses and rafters, and there was this group and that group. Well, it ended up that they studied the concepts and decided that the trusses were the ones that would have the better strength, the more protective way of keeping that roof strong into the future. And that's kind of the key to unity. Bearing means not only having humility, but also loving the other out of love for Christ and, and doing the thing that's best for everybody and for every church's situation and studying the things and coming up with the best answer and knowing that you don't have to always win. Bearing has a suffering side to it, of course. Suffering is so that unity, that highest goal, can be achieved. Why else did Jesus pray for the unity of the church on his last night before he died? He knew this was so important. It was the golden key for the future of a thriving church. Friends, it still is. The Greek word for love used here is agape. The meaning of this word for love is the kind of love that is willing to sacrifice. It's not just that brotherly love or that family passion love. It's the suffering love. And when you truly use agape love, you love your enemy with the same love that Jesus loved us. And who said, forgive them for they know not what they do on the day he was crucified. It is love like the Amish people who after their children were murdered in a school shooting back in 2007, actually gathered money for the education of the children of the man who killed their children. What wondrous love is this? Agape love, God's love. So how is love working for you and your enemies? Remember the love chapter of 1 Corinthians? Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Finally, remember who you are. When I went off to college years ago, my parents said to me, remember who you are. They were meaning that I needed to bring the values of our family and my faith into the many experiences I would encounter in college. The remembrances of those words kept ringing in my ear when there were choices I had to make. And Paul is telling the Ephesians the same thing. Walk in the manner worthy of the call to which you have been called. In other words, remember who you are, church. The word walk conjures up to me a journey, not just a once and done destination. There's no quick fixes for the divisions in our country or in our church. Only continual, patient, slow work. Making mistakes, saying you're sorry, hanging in, supporting one another, the journey is never done. It just gets better as we just keep walking. The word calling reminds me of the immense privilege of being a child of God, redeemed by the blood of Jesus, and promised life everlasting. All Christians agree about this. So why is that not enough to keep us together as a denomination and as a people in the family of humanity? Living in unity is a journey of following your call as a Christian because unity is our best witness and it's the only way to continue the mission of the church most effectively. we got to stay together. The most powerful part of the movie Harriet that I saw a few months ago about the life of the legendary Harriet Tubman was when she was leading people out of slavery and someone started to change their mind. 
and wanted to go back. And without missing a beat, she threatened them with a gun. Now this was not because she was mean-spirited or power-crazy, but it was because Harrogate knew that the very survival of the whole group depended on them staying together in unity, the unity of purpose of getting free. The United Methodist Church is in a dire division, but how sad that our calling as the people called Methodists can actually even be divided, that our love is not sacrificial, that our humanity, our humility is lacking, that our conversations have failed us. God help us. I still believe we're better together, folks, and I always will. I also hope that this is the case in our United States of America, that out of this amazing time of COVID pandemic and calls for black lives to matter, that we see the urgent need for unity, acceptance, equality, and liberation for all people as a unifying purpose for our nation. Without this, we have no peace. We have no hope. Finally, may we give up our disunity wars and study war no more and find the grace and power to live in unity and peace through humility and love which is the hope of our calling. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for the privilege of being one of your children. Oh, God, give us the grace to love all of your children just as you have loved us. And Lord, help us to walk in unity as we go into the future so that people who don't know you will look at Christians and say, oh, how much they loved each other. We pray this for our church. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. We thank God for Bishop Peggy Johnson and her sermon concerning unity. And we continue to pray God's blessings over her life, over her family, and her ministry. Beloved, before we finish our time together, we want to take this opportunity to say to those who have not received Jesus into their lives, we would say to you, come to Jesus today. God loves you so much. God sent his only begotten son to die for you on the cross. You can never be perfect enough. You don't have to be a person that has never made mistakes. Truth be told, we all have made mistakes. But the thing is, is that regardless of the mistakes that you have made, as you receive Jesus into your life, you can be forgiven of those mistakes. You can be redeemed from your sins. All you have to do is receive Jesus into your life, make Jesus your Lord and Savior, repent of your sins. And as you do that, you will be a new creation in Christ. You will never be the same. And you will rest with assurance. You will have a sh no shadow of a doubt of where you will spend eternity. And so if you have made the decision to receive Jesus into your life today, we know that heaven rejoices and we rejoice with you as well. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the household of faith. Amen. Well, beloved, we're so glad that you were able to join us today. And before we go, we wanna give you a friendly reminder uh, to continue to give your tithes and your offerings. We thank you so much for your financial giving, and there are many ways that you can continue to give. You can send your financial contributions to our church at its physical address, 7101 North 20th Street, Philadelphia, PA, 19138. The church office mail slot is available Tuesdays and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. You can use Bill Pay, Grace United Methodist Church, or you can use the Cash App, dollar sign Grace the Place. We thank you so much for your continued giving, and we know that as you continue to be in a, a great blessing to others, as you continue to be a cheerful giver, we know that God will continue to abundantly bless you and meet your needs as well. Amen. 
Well, beloved, thank you so much again for joining us today. God bless you. May heaven continue to smile upon you. And remember, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Go in peace.